All right, bull runners, welcome back to the channel. So today's the big day. Bitcoin spot ETFs are projected to be approved within the next few hours, maybe by the time that you're watching this video. So what I wanna do is I wanna talk about what happened over the past 24 hours. It's absolutely ridiculous with the SEC's account getting hacked and uh, this hacker posting the news early. And I wanna share what exactly happened on the charts. I wanna share some other breaking crypto news that you do not want to miss. So if you hold Ethereum, if you hold XRP, I even have some big news for XRP for you guys that I know you're gonna love. So comment 777. If you're feel, bleh, can barely talk right now. If you're feeling blessed, if you're feeling bullish, let's run it. All right, so the past 24 hours have been absolutely crazy in the crypto space. The SEC made a post saying that today the SEC grants approval for the ETFs, and you saw the price spike all the way upwards of 47, almost $48,000 on some exchanges, it was 48K. Then Gary Gensler shortly posted after that that the Twitter account was hacked and the price drops all the way down to 44,000. Right now, at the current time of making this video, the price is upwards of 46K. Bitcoin has rallied you know, from this low or back up to where it previously was when the announcement was made. So massive market manipulation taking place in the space. And so the timeline, you know, the SEC Gov tweets about Bitcoin ETF approved. Then Gary Gensler says the account was hacked right after. Then the SEC regains control of their account, deletes the original tweet. Then they said they were hacked all within the hour. How does someone get an account back in the hour if they were hacked, unless this was part of the plan? So we're uncovering what's taking place and what's happening. And then we're also gonna share some altcoins that are going to explode into these ETF approvals. And they're already moving right now. So watch this video all the way to the end, guys. You don't want to miss this. So, you know, Gary Gensler posting this. This guy is uh, needs to go. He needs to go. He needs to be fired or stepped down. And so X confirmed that the SEC's account was hacked and did not have two-factor authentication enabled. And so, you know, the guess, if we're seeing what people are guessing, is that the SEC account was both hacked and the tweet was real. The hacker's first tweet um, tweeted Bitcoin. Uh, was just the ticker then likely they found the tweet with the announcement graphic in gensler's quote in the draft folder because you can draft some stuff up you can schedule it out so the sec wouldn't get the date wrong and tweet only the ticker uh, like meme responses to approval you know the hacker uh, wouldn't be somebody to meticulously plan and prepare a graphic that is the style of the sec and also be dumb enough to just tweet a ticker like it's a meme so both things are true the approval announcement is lining up and they just spilled the beans too early and uh the videos we played over the past couple days you know the ceo i believe it was van eck is saying they're going to trade thursday so tomorrow and so sibo is breaking news guys sibo has lodged a request for acceleration to list four bitcoin etfs by tomorrow and the etfs are basically live uh, ARKB, HODL is listed on Fidelity. Limit orders are open. So Vanek, ARK Invest are live. You know, they're just waiting for the official approval from the SEC. And so when we look at Bitcoin's dominance right now, it's sitting at 53.93%. We saw it dive from 55 all the way down to 50%. And now it's climbing back up. So like I've said, my uh, thesis is still the same. I would expect Bitcoin's dominance to rally up into uh, the ETF approval. And then for the ETF uh, announcement to just blast Bitcoin up. And then for the hype to die off, eventually people start searching for the next narrative. And then the next narrative would be the halving is coming up and everyone knows what happens going into the halving. We see a crash. And so we'd see Bitcoin's dominance come back down. And how quickly this happens, it's anyone's guess. I mean, we could see Bitcoin, you know, come up and not quite make it to this resistance in this red box that you can see right here at roughly 57%. Now in my previous video, I talked about when Bitcoin rolls over in dominance, what happened the last time this took place. And we saw a massive altcoin bull run when Bitcoin's dominance went from 70% all the way down to 39%. So that could very well happen. Or we could just see a mass sell off across the whole industry and, and people go into Tether and stable coins as they expect the halving event to be a sell um, sell-off event going into the halving and consolidation through 2024. So we've seen the majority of the gains so far, but it's going to be a wild ride over the next one to two weeks, guys. So the most interesting times in crypto right now is we look at the liquidation heat map. So leverage, they wiped the leverage off the table. And now that the price has been, you know, stagnant to the side since this, uh, those tweets were posted, we've seen more leverage climb up and there's leverage to the upside. You can see at 46,587 to liquidate 28 million and then all the way up here at $49,000. So if the price moves to the upside, what would happen? It would be a drastic move really, really fast 
to $49,000. It'd be roughly $49,000 that Bitcoin would move too quick to the down to the upside. Now to the downside, if Bitcoin sees a sell the news event, it would move to roughly $43,000. So the likelihood of a move to the upside is higher because there's more leverage at shorts right here. So it would just blast through these shorts, liquidate them, and then we would see most likely Bitcoin top out at around 48, 49K, consolidate there. And if we push higher, well, then we could crack 50K or we could get close. What I'm expecting is Bitcoin to get close, but not quite crack it, to get $48,500 at a 618 retracement. And then we come down. Now, I hope I'm wrong. I hope we keep going up, but that's what I'm expecting. And now Ripple, what's happening with Ripple? You know, we have some news coming about potential ETFs for uh, Ripple. Could that be taking place? But Ripple is buying back 285 million dollars worth of its shares valued at over 11 billion dollars and so uh, they're buying back this amount in the company from early investors and employees and so the investment also known as a tender offer valued the company at 11.3 billion investors are only allowed to sell up to six percent of their stake sources added who are requested an anonymity, I think that's how you say the word, and they confirmed the legal tender and said it plans to spend 500 million in the plan buyback to cover the cost of converting restricted stock units into shares and taxes. Now, one thing that Ripple needs to do as a company, guys, is they need to um, usher in airdrops for XRP holders for newer tokens. They need more meme coins, they need more airdrops, and so that's what people want, you know, and then uh, obviously the development from behind the scenes, they got that down, in terms of partnerships and all that good stuff. So Garlene House said that Ripple now holds over $1 billion cash and over $25 billion worth of crypto, mostly XRP coins on its balance sheet. And so this is gonna be, gonna be big news taking place for XRP, but the price action has been pretty poor recently. So it's just a game of patience here. And former uh, Accenture IBM rep is letting us know, you know, the flip the switch moment could be happening at any point. Listen to this. I'm 54 years old, live in Los Angeles, California. I've been a tech executive for 30 years. I, I started with IBM and I've worked for uh, Accenture for quite some time at the time that I was heavily investing in XRP, actually. And I've also worked for FIS. Some of you know one of the largest payments provider. I, don't, I no longer work at FIS. I'm building a tech startup right now, which I'll, I'll remain nameless at this point. So a lot of background in payments. But one of the things that Bob and I talked about some time ago, when I was at Accenture, one of the things, I'm, I'm no longer on NDAs, but the one thing that I was able to do is Accenture, just like everyone else, has a salesforce.com, which is a CRM, customer relationship management software. And I was, as an investor, was able to go into and look at, and this is a time where everybody was doubting, oh, you know, Ripple's not working with, with that many banks. And that's the time Brad Garlinghouse was saying, we're bringing on two new banks a week. And I could look in salesforce.com because you wonder how does a small startup like Ripple, who only has... Oh, you know, at the time, 50 to 100 employees, how are they integrating these banks? Because that's a big project, three months, six months, a year. And the reason why they were getting them on so quickly is Accenture and IBM are the two largest tech integrators in the world. The Global 2000 used them for implementing any of the latest, greatest softwares. And so Accenture was a partner of Ripple. And I looked in our salesforce.com and I could see all 300 banks that Accenture had integrated for Ripple. Now, and I was, okay, I was pleasantly surprised at that. And we're talking big names. This was, this was uh, Bank of Australia, Bank of England, Bank of Canada, so on and so on. And so they're all primed and they've been primed and ready to go since this was what, 2000, Bob, that was about 2016 I shared with that with you? Yeah, I think it was 2017, 2018. Yeah, somewhere in there. Minimum. And I could see them all. They were all, and that means they're all primed and ready to go. So you've heard, uh, Mr. Swartz talked about the flywheel effect. You've had, you've got to have liquidity on both sides for this pro for this thing to work. And so, I, while I can't speak to a flip the switch moment, I, I'm not an insider. I won't claim to be, but I can just see what's happening. That there is a moment where something happens where they all start using it. So it's definitely coming for XRP. You know, it's anyone's guess when that liquidity starts to really flow into XRP, but it's inevitable. It will happen. It's just a game of patience, guys. You know, it could happen uh, this month. It could happen at the end of 2024. It could happen at the end of 2025. It could happen at the end of 2030. But 
before 2030, something big is going to happen. And so for seven years, you know, you, we're going to be talking about a lot of different projects on this channel on top of XRP that I'm diversified into because I, I have a, a lot of different crypto projects that I believe in and that. But XRP is my number one. And uh, I'm going to share some projects by the end of this video in the charts. I think it's like four or five different projects that I think are going to do very, very well. But listen to this. We played this the other day, and I think this is super important to replay. The SEC tomorrow says, OK, you're all clear. You can start trading on Thursday. How soon before you turn around and try to make other spot products for different crypto assets? You know, I think we're going to see a lot of filings come out for uh, Ethereum. I even think we might see something for Ripple, given uh, the recent progress. Uh, you notice that Grayscale just added Ripple to one of their trusts that's publicly traded. So it wouldn't surprise me if we saw Ripple or Ethereum spot ETFs out there. I really don't know if we're going to do that or not. I think those are more retail plays and people have other ways to access them. But uh, given, given that this, this market, anything could happen, anything could happen. So a lot of people are arguing on Twitter about how could you have a spot ETF if it's a, not a security for XRP. Well, Bitcoin's a commodity, and so the ETF in and of itself, you know, has different legalities for the security. Same thing for gold. You know, the gold ETF that was approved, gold's a commodity. So XRP being a currency, not a, a security, but the ETF still could come. And the following image here shows Ripple employees like Rosie Rios, you know, founder Chris Larson and several others connected to the Fed, the U.S. Treasury, the World Economic Forum, and the most important financial institutions all around the world. So do you guys think that XRP is part of a much bigger plan? Of course it is. It's common sense. You know, a lot of people that don't agree with that, well, they try and, you know, fight it or fight it by not paying it any mind or eventually going to be paying it mind later, like what happened back in 2017. And Ripple will be on board as the gold sponsor for the Digital Euro Conference February 29th of this year. So will XRP bridge gold back CBDCs? Will this happen? I don't know. Very interesting how Ripple is a, you know, a sponsor of that. So looking at the XRP price chart, you know, on the on the monthly, we're in just this macro symmetrical triangle right here. And that uh, MACD, you know, is is in the positive territory. We saw this cross take place back at the 1st of June of 2023, which signaled that we're about to go into a massive bullish uh, breakout, similar to what happened in the past similar to happen uh, the last bull run, the bull run before then. Now, where the price will go, it's anyone's guess. I mean, we can draw the fibs and we've done this in so many videos. I'm not gonna talk too much about this, guys, but a 3.618 is uh, $12, a full extension is $13. So I think XRP could do 12, 13, 15, 20 bucks this bull run cycle. And for where we are right now, again, no, no guarantees. It's not financial advice. I could be completely wrong here and um, consult your financial advisor before doing anything in crypto you know, because we just bring you the news. But to do a 2.618, that's a 14x from right here. To do a full extension, that's a 23x to go to 14 bucks for XRP. So I do think XRP is a safe 10 to 20x, guys, a safe play. A lot of these other projects that will do a 10 or 20x are risky plays because they're a lot more volatile. Now, when people say XRP hasn't done anything over the past year, guys, XRP's up a 2x over the past year. So it hasn't done anything. Clearly, people haven't been paying attention. Now, there are projects who have been doing that have been doing more. For example, you know, Arbitrum, um, the market cap's lower. It's in at two point five billion dollars, and this is a leading layer two scaling solution for Ethereum because Ethereum's gas fees are absolutely ridiculous. And so, you guys see the uh, the total supply is you know ten uh, ten billion of Arbitrum, and then the uh, circulating supply is one point two. Now, Arbitrum's just breaking out from uh, the high of the year, and so when we go to the chart right here, we can see, actually, no, it's not breaking out. It's almost breaking out. It's like $2.12. So if it breaks that, I think Arbitrum is going to run really, really fast, either $2.50 or maybe even higher because we're, we were in price discovery. And if we go back into price discovery, if I draw the fibs from the high of April to the low of September, a 3.618 is a $4.68, a full extension, $5.40. And so what I would expect to happen with Bitcoin's ETF approval uh, happening today, potentially in the next few hours, is when Bitcoin runs, the top altcoins that have been performing well over the past month are going to rally too. And so that would be like Solana, Avalanche, Arbitrum, Optimism, and the other um, top 50 projects that have been doing doing well. And so I would expect you know Arbitrum to shoot really fast to potentially $2.50 and then maybe cool off. And eventually it would come down for, to finish wave number one in the Elliott waves, because what we're forming right here is a macro uh, Elliott wave. And wave number one 
you know, it could be a 1.618, and then we see it come back down uh, for wave number two, leading into uh, March and April, right around here, as we consolidate through 2024. And then towards the end of 2024, I would expect wave number three to be massively uh, impulsive, and that to push Arbitrum potentially to a 3.618 to a 4.236. I would expect 3.618, we cool off for a little bit, and then wave number five to be uh, a blow off top beyond a full extension. I could see a five to $7 for uh, Arbitrum this bull run cycle. I don't see why not. You know, this is one of the main projects people are talking about. The airdrops on it are taking place. And so, you know, that's not that much to go to seven bucks. It's only 200% from where we are. So I think we could blow way beyond that. That's just being really, really conservative right here, guys, because, you know, Arbitrum was launched, you see, like March of 2023 on, uh, on uh, Binance. And so it's brand new. It's not, you know, it hasn't had a multiple bull runs and same thing with optimism optimism as well too you see the listing on coin market cap back in june of 2022 3.5 billion dollar market cap another leading layer two solution for ethereum to solve the problems of those crazy stupid gas fees and so the circulating supply is 22 percent i would like to see more of uh, the total supply and the max supply in circulation but you know when the momentum and the marketing and the liquidity is flowing in it can offset bad tokenomics like a low circulating supply so if the circulating and supply you know if they start releasing a lot into circulation really quickly which i doubt they're going to do but that would lead to price suppression and it would take a larger market cap to grow so this first bull run this is going to be this, this is going to be the uh the cycle for projects like this guys and then after this bull run i don't really expect their plan to hold optimism or arbitrum long term right so this is more of like a just this cycle prop type of project okay now, long term, for all we know, they could do very well. But what we're looking at right now on, on DeFiLlama.com is the total staking in terms of how much is staked on these uh, on these chains in, in DeFi. And then also the total value locked on all chains. And as you guys can see, Ethereum is obviously number one with over $30 billion total value locked. Then Tron's number two, Binance Smart Chain. And then Arbitrum is number four. Arbitrum is beating Solana. Arbitrum has $2.5 billion locked. Solana has 1.2 billion, then Optimism is at 900 million. Then you see like Polygon, Avalanche, Base, uh, Monta, Cardano, Kronos. This is good news. So with this massive amount locked, there's not gonna be a lot of sell pressure when you got $2.5 billion locked for Arbitrum. And so you look at the market cap, $2.5 billion in, in market cap. And so, you know, who knows how accurate this really is because that's just about all the market cap. But the fact that it's number four on here is absolutely massive. So keep Arbitrum, keep Optimism on your watch list. We'll be covering more videos about them. Now, another project that just popped up, guys, is Luxo, L-Y-X, in at $10.27. You know, this project is breaking out. It only has a $300 million market cap. Uh, the circulating supply is 30 million tokens. The total supply is 42 million. So very low, a very low supply for this. And it's only at $10. As you guys know, Bitcoin has 21 million. So this has 42 million. I'm not saying that this is going to go to the price of a Bitcoin, but sitting at $10 right now, you know, that's like spotting Bitcoin at $20 and 40 cents because it's double Bitcoin supply. So, you know, Bitcoin would be the equivalent of like 20 bucks for a Bitcoin. So this could do very, very well this bull run cycle. And the reason why is Fabian, uh, Vogelsteller, he uh, in the blockchain space, he's a veteran who was part of the Ethereum Foundation in its early days. From 2015 to 2018, he helped shape the Ethereum space, building the official Ethereum wallet, the first decentralized Web3 browser, and tools like uh, Web3.js, the most used JavaScript library in the blockchain space today. In November 2015, he proposed ERC20, the token standard that initiated the ICO wave and the DeFi movement. And so it's massive, guys. And also, I, I'm going to butcher her name, but Mar. Mar Marjorie Hernandez uh, is a multifaceted innovation and product expert, equal parts entrepreneur and designer. And uh, if we look at her, uh, her accolades right here, a brand strategist for Swiss and German brands, she created and managed EY's Digital Innovation Lab as a digital transformation and strategy executive. And so, you know, powerhouse team Fabian's obviously the real, real, real big dog here, developing the ARC 20 and also being a part of the Ethereum Foundation, guys, this is massive. They got some big advisors on the team as well, too. And when we look at the chart, you know, on Coin Market Cap, there's an old version and a new version with their new token. So if we're looking at the old version, it really shows the true price action to the upside, with the high being over $354 right here. So how far are we off from the high from where we're sitting right now? That's a 30, what, like a 30x? 
Now, I'm not saying that that's going to happen. You know, we need to break this descending resistance right here first, and then also this horizontal zone of resistance between, you know, 14 and $16 uh, before testing uh, 27 bucks up here to the upside. But I think this project is going to do very, very well, guys. You know, if we see Bitcoin's ETF approved, which more than likely it looks like it's happening right now, you know, because these companies are starting to list it. We're just waiting for the official announcement from the SEC. I would expect altcoins to boom really quick. And for us to see, you know, some type of massive rally for uh, Luxo to the upside, anywhere between $14 to $27, and then for us to see a correction going into Bitcoin's having. So that'd be anywhere from a, a, a two to a three X for this project. Then long-term guys, I don't see why this project couldn't be in the hundreds of dollars. I mean, if we're drawn from the the high of $350 to the low, and we were to do a 3.618, that would be $1,200, a full extension, $1,500. Now, even if we only perform half of that, we go to 100 bucks, say we go to 100 bucks, that's an 8X for this project. If we go to $200, that's a 17X. If we do a full extension, that's 13,000%. That's a 130X for this. And so with, the, what happened with Cardano, with what happened with XLM, with what happened with Polygon, with what happens with Solana, with what happened with these other projects where these founders, they, they were part of earlier teams, like whether it was Ethereum or they were working on, you know, like XRP and then they left or something, and then they're founding these other projects. These people are geniuses, guys. And every single one of the projects where some genius has left, they've gone and they produce something big. And so, you know, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but one thing that I like to do is I like to find people that are smarter than me and figure out what they're doing and position myself at the right time. So don't buy this project, don't sell this project, just keep it on your watch list. Go to CoinMarketCap, star it, add it to your account, and just watch it. Watch what happens, and we'll check We'll check back in. We'll see if this thing does anything over the next 12 months. And so in the short term, you know, we could come back up to this downward trending resistance, and you know, because the momentum right now is on the larger caps, like Bitcoin, you know, you got Solana, Rallying again, Avalanche, Optimism, Arbitrum. This one only has a $300 million market cap, so if we push up to this descending resistance and we get rejected, and we see a consolidation period going into Bitcoin's having where it just stays in this macro symmetrical triangle, um, anywhere between five to 10 bucks, if it stays within here, then, hey, maybe you could see a good dip for this project to scoop it up and then watch what happens leading into the end of 2024. I would expect us to start breaking out for wave number three, because most of these charts are very similar, guys. You see this breakout taking place since September and October. As you can see right here, October 22nd, Luxo started breaking out. Another project is VeChain. I think VeChain is gonna prove its utility this bull run cycle because VeChain has been overlooked. It hasn't been really talked about. VeChain's all time high, guys, is over 28 cents. It's sitting at three cents right now. And so I think VeChain's gonna do well. Disrupting supply chain management, uh, 8X just to get back to the all time high. And so it's holding, uh, if it holds this support right here at roughly three cents, and we see a break to the upside, the next resistance is roughly 0 0.0447, um, so about four and a half cents. And then the next zone that I would expect VeChain to uh, top out at before we see some type of correction, if we can push past this resistance, would be anywhere between five cents to seven cents right here. And then for us to come back down for corrective wave number two, much deeper correction consolidation and work our way into the end of 2024 for a VeChain to break out. So VeChain has seen a rally from one and a half to uh, about four cents. So it's rallied up about 165%. It's done better than XRP and it's cooling off right now. The RSI is sitting at 45. If we see VeChain further sell off to the downside, you know, I'd be looking to accumulate some VeChain around two cents down here if we see a sell-off. Now, if VeChain pushes up, I'm holding some VeChain. I'm bullish on this project. Guys, I've been holding VeChain since the last bull run. I scooped up VeChain, you know, around a, a penny back here. You know, I bought it on this correction all the way back here, and I was buying it all the way through this period right here before the last bull run. So I made some good money on VeChain, and I'm expecting VeChain to do very, very well this cycle as well, too. It had an explosive bull run last time. I mean, look at what VeChain did from the low to the high. It did a 17,000%, it did 170X, guys. And so yes, the market cap is larger, but the utility on this project is top notch. Another project that I expect to be one of the leaders of this bull run is ICP. Now we talked about ICP in the past few videos. We broke out of multiple descending resistances on the macro. You know, what's, what happens when you break from a descending resistance is you break it, you either hold it as support or you rally up, 
you form a new uh, a new range or not a new range. You retest the previous range from the past, and then you see rejections and consolidation. So then we form a new a new descending resistance right here. We break out from it, and then we're now officially in the uptrend in a bull market. Where now we're going to see um, ICP, you know, come back up to the next level, the next level to watch for is around $26. So if we see ICP rally and the rest of the altcoin markets rally in, on, and after the ETF approval for a week or two, I would expect ICP to shoot really, really fast, guys, upwards of, you know, 25, 26 bucks up here. And then for this to be the top, if the top's not already in, and then for us to come down and consolidate, depending on how low the dip will be, will will be variable based on how low Bitcoin goes. Like if Bitcoin goes up to 50k and then bitcoin only drops to like 40k the altcoins might not bleed out as much but if bitcoin comes all the way back down to 30k or 32k you know the altcoin market could crack 50 percent. we could see a 60 percent correction we could see icp come all the way back down to eight dollars which was resistance from the top of this descending resistance right here so the support to watch for corrective wave number two for icp is eight dollars you know if i'm going to accumulate more icp i'd be looking to accumulate it around eight dollars and for us to see some massive shakeout event in 2024 leading bitcoin's having and then for us to work our work our way out of here form some type of triangle the end of 2024 then to break out even higher and start pushing you know 80 to 100 dollars for this project to retest the high of september of 2021 one of the best projects in crypto, one of the most overlooked projects in crypto, and one of the most hush-hush projects in crypto where a lot of these big influencers aren't talking about it because they're scared. They're scared to help you make money because they're taking payments from all these other companies to promote all these other projects that have, you know, one bull run cycle in the max. ICP, guys, is going to perform well for the next decade. So watch this video. We'll come back. We'll come back to this video in 2030 and we'll show you what's happening with ICP. Another project to watch for this bull run cycle is Casper. I think CSPR is going to do pretty well. It's sitting at four cents right now. We do see this upward trending support right here that we need to watch. So if we see a sell off of altcoins after Bitcoin going into the um, going into the having post ETF news, I would expect Casper to come down to three cents if we see a sell off. Now, if we see a push to the upside and we break this zone of resistance that um, it wicked at back in May of 2023, the next stop is all the way up here at the middle of this range um, that it was zigzagging in between all the way through 2022 in the bear market. You saw the complacency dead cap bounce right here. So it's roughly 10 cents, guys. So from where we are right now, for Casper to hit uh, 10 cents is 124% right there. So if you had 10 grand, that would be like turning it into um, $22,000, I believe. If we look at the high back here at 86 cents. How far are we off from that that high? You know, we're about 17X for Casper. So Casper is gonna be another big performer this bull run cycle. You know, the chart's looking great. It's gearing up to make a massive, massive move over the next few months. Now, another project that we're watching, perpetual trading, guys, leverage trading. GMX is the leader of this space. And GMX is sitting at $52 right now. The high is upwards of $91. This one hasn't had a bull run. You can see here the chart started in October of 2022, and it was rallying into February and March of 2023. Then obviously we saw the sell-off in the rest of the industry coming down into September. And then September, October, the markets have been doing well. So there is a resistance at about $60 right here. You know, I would expect GMX with the rally of the ETF approvals to push up within this range. And then if we see a sell-off, uh, writing this upward trending support right here. But if we see a break of this upward trending uh, support, then I would expect to see a crash down to $43 right here. As you guys can see, this was support and resistance. Um, support back in June of 2023, resistance back here in September. This was a double bottom trend reversal. You see bottom number one, this is sending support, bottom number two, this neckline. We broke the neckline, we back test the neckline, and then we're bouncing off of it. So if we break this upward trending uh, and this ascending support, we could come back down to this neckline uh, leading into Bitcoin's halving in April, and then we work our way out of here in 2024. So if you you know are already allocated to different projects that you believe in, guys, and you're looking to accumulate GMX, you know, leading into April. So we got a few months, January, February, March, April, May. We got four or five months of accumulation happening. But hey, if we just break out and we shoot really, really quick through this resistance, then GMX could fly really fast to $75, consolidate here, and then back test this upward trending support. 
and uh, maybe break that and not come as low as people think in 2024 before we continue the uptrend at the end. I just expect this project to do very well. Lots of people are talking about it. People are bullish on it. Great tokenomics, uh, great team, great utility, and it's going to do well. So let me know your guys' thoughts on those projects. If there's any other projects you're bullish on, comment them below. And also, if you want to discover our top altcoin picks before we make these videos, you want to discover them first and you want to get early bird access to our financial education platform first when that's released. You don't need any crypto trading experience. All you need to do is go to bullrunners.com, click the button on your page. On the page, put in your best email address. It's free to do it. You get instant access to our Telegram group and you'll be notified first when our financial education platform is live because we're gonna give you the best information to help you guys prepare for the worst that's yet to come in this economy. And so we're backing up our truck all the way to the bank, grabbing the bags, packing them, stacking them, leaving no bags left behind because we believe that the spending power of the dollar is going down in value. That's a fact based on inflation, blockchain tech, distributed ledger technology is going up in interest. That's the truth. And together, you know where we're going. We're going camping on the beaches of the moon. As always, I'll see you on the next video. I'll see you on bullrunners.com. You know what to do. Stay bullish.